and welcome to the Pig and Whistle Tales from Azeroth. As always, here at the Pig and Whistle Inn in Stormwind, I go for a variety of subjects with regards to World of Warcraft. So grab a bottle or a pint, sit back and enjoy. Today we're going to be going over, is it the best expansion that has been released? Now, obviously, it's very much uh, early days and it's very, very much opinion-based obviously, as most of the episodes are. But it has to be talked about as a potential because the potential is very much there from what we've seen in the several days that we've had it. Now, I'll be going over each individual reason as to why I think it could be the best, as to why it has that potential. But we'll start off with the weekly uh, there's really not a lot for the weekly news though. As we've moved on from Shadowlands, there are no world bosses yet until the Vault of the Incarnates is out. There is no Mythic Plus season yet, so no Mythic affixes yet. There is only um, a Brawl and we will be going over one spell which has, um, or one spell's history. The Brawl this week is Packed House. It's very nice for those PvP players who want some easy honour um, just to gear up in PvP. Very quick, very efficient. And the spell that we're going to be looking over this week is Soothing Mist, the monk ability. So obviously Soothing Mist was added in Mr. Pandaria back in 2012 when the monk class was introduced. The chance to generate one chi while channeling Soothing Mist has increased to 35%, up from 25%. Hotfix, Soothing Mist and Crackling Jade Lightning now have a 30% chance to generate chi when they deal damage. Uh, was 35%. I didn't know Soothing Mist deal, uh, dealt damage back in Mr. Pandaria. Um, be a bit weird, a little bit of mist hitting you, and it's like, oh, that really hurts. I, I can understand the lightning, but a little bit of mist? Really? And the last patch in uh, Mr. Pandaria, the tooltip updated to reflect the reduction of chi generation chance from 35 to 30%. It had one change in Warlords of Draenor. Soothing Mist Healing has now been increased by 100%. Its global cooldown has been reduced to 0.5 seconds, but no longer heals immediately and no longer generates chi. Now requires Stance of the Wise Serpent. And what this did was increases uh, healing done by 20%, improves the functionality of Crackling Jade Lightning and Spinning Crane Kick as well. It had many changes in Legion. It had a total of seven. It was redesigned into a passive ability. Soothing Mist uh, should no longer fail to cast when repeatedly applied. Soothing Mist cast from the Monk's Jade Serpent statue should cancel on targets further than 60 yards from the statue, which makes sense. Soothing Mist can no longer be interrupted by Spirit Tether. Soothing Mist healing reduced by 10% in PvP. Uh, Soothing Mist version of Ancient Mistweaver Arts is unaffected. This was, I believe, the mastery that they had uh, back in the day. Um, Shailun's Gift, Jesus, um, now activates Soothing Mist. Now heals for 64% of spell power per tick instead of 55 And the last change in Legion, casting enveloping mists while channeling soothing mists, no longer consumes Thunder's Foca T. In BFA, it only had one change, change back into an active ability. Previous um, infuse enveloping mists, vivify life cocoon and uh, shy loon's gift also triggers soothing mist. After casting these spells, you continue to channel healing mists into the target healing them for 64% of your spell power every 0.5 seconds until you take another action. This was the way that I enjoyed it, to be honest. It meant that you could be a lot more free, a lot more mobile with your healing, but now you're kind of, as a Mistweaver monk, sat there casting, and it's really not enjoyable, in my opinion. So I'm going to give Monk a go. I think it will be my main healer for the expansion, but I think that it will be very, very tough to replicate how it felt in Legion. So, let's get on to it. Dragon Flight. It has the potential to be one of the best expansions ever released. You have the great expansions, such as uh, Wrath of the Lich King. Legion was very good. Um, You have Mr. Pandaria, which is a little bit, you know, on the 
average side, but I think the content that was released was very solid. Where you had multiple raid tiers, you had four major patches, you had a lot going on there in Miss Pandaria. It's certainly not looking like it's going to be on the more disappointing side, such as Shadowlands, Battle for Azeroth, certainly. You had... Don't, don't get me started on Cataclysm, man. That was so sad. I've actually neglected that part of my brain, Cataclysm. I don't remember most of it. All I remember is that it wasn't great, and I can't put my finger on why, but my brain has just blocked that entire expansion out. It was that bad. Um, I can remember more of my uh, Wrath days than I can my Cataclysm days, which is really weird considering I probably put more hours into Cataclysm. But yeah, um, there's going to be a few major factors in this. Uh, dragon riding for one, the story, uh, professions, extra activities... Uh, enjoyment and just gearing wise is what I've kind of broken it down into. But let's start off with the big one, the big one that a lot of people had a lot of speculation going into, whether it'll be good, whether it'll be bad, whether it'll be just something that is annoying going through. Dragon riding. If you're not familiar with what dragon riding is, it is a new take on flying in World of Warcraft. Instead of uh, the normal, you can't fly until patch 0.2, whatever the patch is, 0.2, uh, 9.2, 8.2, 10.2, whatever it is. Instead, you get dragon riding immediately, essentially. Uh, you have to do 50% of the questing in the first zone to unlock it, and it is account-wide. Everything you do with dragon riding is account-wide, so there is no refarming it on your alts, which, by the way, is the biggest W ever from blizzard and it is so alt friendly it is unreal and i've tested that it is so alt friendly and it's amazing uh dragon riding if you're not familiar with it like i said it's a different take on flying you use your momentum to regain vigor and you use this vigor to use certain abilities uh, to launch yourself up in the air a bit more to uh, push yourself to go the extra distance to speed up that kind of thing and uh, Essentially, you use your momentum to go down, pick up speed, and then use your, yeah, like I said, momentum to sort of even out, go a little bit higher, push uh, higher and stuff like that. It's faster than flying. It's more interactive than flying. Instead of just going up to a certain height, pressing numlock, and it auto runs you or auto flies you to your location. And it's just generally enjoyable. It's really enjoyable. Even going from one quest to the next, you're looking at like 100 yards. You just use a little button that launches you in the air and you glide down. It's very quick, very efficient, and you're usually handing quests, killing mobs. So while you're uh, de uh, dismounted, you're regaining that vigor and you don't need to worry about it most of the time. The only time that you need to worry about it is when you first get it and you need to be a bit more... Cons uh, consumer friendly with how you use your vigor essentially i'm uh, quite high in terms of maxed i think i need like a few more points or a few more glyphs in order to upgrade it uh essentially i never have to land i've never have to land it's so smooth it's so fun to use it's absolutely amazing and like i just mentioned the glyphs are the way that you upgrade your dragon riding. You can get a total of about 50 glyphs, I'm pretty sure. And the way that you find them is just throughout the Dragon Isles. They'll be atop of towers, in between a mountain range, underneath a bridge. They'll be anywhere within the Dragon Isles, usually in scenic places. So you have to explore to find them. But your dragon will alert you if there is one that is close by. You just simply fly through them and you use these glyphs to upgrade your riding. They give you more vigor. They give you vigor while you're um, gliding, while you're at a certain speed. Uh, it increases the rate at which it recharges and stuff like that. And it's just generally fun to find these glyphs. Uh, personally, from my experience, it's better just as go about your business and you will come across most of these and it's quite a nice little thing to come across every now and again i wouldn't recommend just going on youtube and looking up where all of them are because it takes the fun out of it honestly it's like oh yep done that cool we we've been in such a mindset for 
wow that it's like oh okay we have to do this in order to progress our character so we mid max everything it's like oh my god we need all of this like unlocked immediately but you don't you can actually enjoy the game and enjoy the exploration of the game without having that sort of dark cloud over you of oh my god this is really affecting my player power my character feels weaker because of this you might be annoyed that you can't sort of handle your dragon riding because it's not good enough or personally you can do dragon riding with three vigor at the very start it's just you need to utilize it well and those who complain about it probably can't do dragon riding that well in all honesty they can't understand in their head the mechanic of it and it just takes time i'm lucky enough to have played with this mechanic before uh in a different game and essentially it's like a second nature to me at that point but i would very much recommend just going around exploring don't look it up on youtube you will come across a lot of them through just your leveling experience and i would very much it's a more fulfilling thing when you come across one rather than going out and finding all 50 immediately and then it's like oh well my dragon riding's max that's boring now it shouldn't be it should be something that you want to discover and you know really take time to enjoy rather than going around mid maxing it because it does not relate to player power at all moving on to the story and the big bad within the story now these are obviously going to be a little bit of spoilers but i'm not going to go into the story as it is i'm just going to talk about who the big bad is for the first patch which a lot of people probably know but if you don't know then i'd recommend skipping this part but honestly it's no no real big spoilers because everyone's seen it even if you do the first 10 quests of the uh, expansion you've probably seen who the big bad is for the raid but the story in all four of the zones are quality there's no way i can say that it's bad the cinematics alone i didn't think that there'd be so many there is a lot there's a lot of really rendered cinematics there's a lot of you know the shorter cinematics where it's got your character in there's a lot of medium cinematics or the mid cinematics where it's like not fully rendered but also very strong cinematics it doesn't have your character in it's very well produced a lot of the They've done a lot with the cinematics in this. There is a shit ton more than I could ever imagine. And it really shows the storyline on what's happening, you know, where it uh, pushes you to go next, just how strong this big bad is. And that's the thing as well. I want to talk about the big bad in this uh, raid tier. This isn't even the big bad of the expansion. This is of the current raid tier is getting more screen time than what we saw of the actual big bad, the Jailer, in Shadowlands. The main boss, the main protagonist, protagonist, antagonist, I get that mixed up for some reason, of the last expansion, the entire expansion, has had less screen time than the ending boss of the first raid in this expansion. I'm pretty sure. That is mad to think about. And this this raid boss seems more dangerous than the like jailer the actual like jailer himself the one who was in control of the moor how absolutely insane is that it's absolutely crazy to think about it's they're really bigging up this like raid boss and i'm all for it they've done an amazing job with it they've done an amazing job with the cinematics the rendered ones the in-game ones they're absolutely killing it with the in-game ones but the story throughout all of the zones links well it just gets better and better as well the more you go through the zones the better the storyline progresses starting off in the waking shore very solid you get your dragon ride in that kind of thing and you sort of see oh this big bad's back that kind of thing Going into the next one, you see, oh, okay, it's starting to get a bit serious. They've now, you know, done something that's quite impactful. And then it's suddenly like, oh, oh, shit, you you almost, you know, killed this person or did something like this. But like constantly you're finding new and new or newer like 
players that are entering the storyline, some that you know, some that are very old, some that are very new, but all of the like Easter eggs that you found all throughout um, WoW with dragons and stuff are very, very cool. I'm going to drop a very small, uh, kind of a spoiler here, but at the end of the Azure uh, part, the blue dragonfly uh, part, you meet someone and this person, you sort of don't know where they've come from. Uh, They come out of nowhere, essentially, but it's a little um, dragon, a little blue dragon. Very simple. Nothing too crazy. They're not big part of the storyline at all. But this dragon is called Emigosa. And it was a dragon that you helped back in Legion when they were just a little whelp. And you could see, like, how they've grown, which I think is really cool. And I didn't even clock it at first. I had to be told by someone that that was um, the whelp that we helped out in Legion and stuff. And it's like, oh my god, that is... Yeah, you're right, and that is so fucking cool it's so cool because you can see these characters and these npcs and whatever like progress in their just in their day-to-day lives they've grown up and it's really cool to see it's them small things that really capture me because it's i've obviously played wow since wrath and i've played through a lot of legion i did azuna and i remember this drake or this little whelp i remember them I remember where they are. I remember exactly like they gave a couple quests and stuff and it's really good. So to see them come back and a little bit older is really, really cool. It's just a little Easter egg. And yeah, there's a shit ton of stuff like that all throughout the aisles. You meet so many characters that we've met over the years because World of Warcraft is just a fantasy game. You see a shit ton of dragons. So obviously in an expansion full of dragons, you're going to see all of them come back, most of them anyway, but it's just really cool, and the story and the big bad has done, or the story has led up to, you know, having a big bad that you actually want to kill, and you're like, oh shit, this one's actually going to be quite tough to kill, or like, they're really going to mess things up if we don't, you know, deal with them very soon. You're actually worried about them, essentially. Now, the next part I want to talk about is professions. Professions although there is a little bug, which I find quite funny. Um, I'll get to that in a sec. Professions are a lot more, they look a bit more refined, which is really nice. I enjoy the, like having to get in there and really put your um, brain power behind your professions, which ones you want to take. um, What sort of quality do you want to make it? Do you want to make it one star, two star, three star quality. I know it's not stars, it's diamonds, but I'm going to call them star qualities because it just makes more sense. Um, and that kind of thing. You can sell them, you can do your work orders, you can do work orders for other people. It's I'm not going to go into this much because I haven't really dug deep into the professions yet, but it is absolutely quality and it looks a lot of fun. With the enchanting, with engineering, I would imagine is great. Alchemy is a bit more meh at the moment for me but i'm not that high i'm i'm under 50 so i really need to work on my alchemy um and i won't really go into more on the professions yet because i've yet to see the full potential or the full consequences of how they've changed it essentially because it could go either way but i think it's going to go in the positive uh direction and this means that they can introduce stuff like making furniture potentially for um like housing, player housing in the future. There's a lot that they could do with this sort of redesigned profession system, which is really good. Extra activities within the Dragon Isles. Now, a lot of the time, extra activities means uh, leveling up your player power through artifact power, through Azerite power, through uh, Azerite? As- no, Azerite power. Azerite was Battle for Azeroth. Anima. Anima power. AP. Um, a lot of grinding to get your plow, pow, the player power level up. That's, that's a thing of the past. Once you hit 70, the only way you can get player power is through gear. Your gear matters. So you don't have to gear right away. I 
chose to do a couple battlegrounds every day to get one or two pieces because I only wanted I'm only interested in PvP essentially. So I want some PvP gear and I'm fully decked out in PvP gear. I've got the best PvP gear that I can get, which is the honor gear. Um I don't intend on upgrading it because it only upgrades for PvE content, not PvP. So I have currently the best gear that I can get for PvP, which is great. I'm done gearing. So that means that I can do extra activities. On a side note, I do want to go back to the gearing system. Um, well, not the gearing system, the player power system. I love that I hit max level and didn't feel the need to have to instantly go and get player power through artifact power through leveling up my Heart of Azeroth through leveling up my conduits or whatever. I loved that feeling because I felt so free. It was like, well, what what do I want to do? I can just carry on with the main story quests. I can do whatever quests I want. I can do world quests. I can do some races on my dragon riding. I can do whatever the hell I want. I'm not obligated to level up my character because it won't hinder me in any way. The only way that I'll hinder myself is if I don't gear it up, but I've got loads of time to do that. I'll do that on my own time. Like it's one of them things I don't feel obligated to do anything because I feel like I won't be left behind. I know that I can catch up in gear if I miss a few weeks or something. It's one of them things. But in previous expansion, it was always, oh, you've missed a few weeks. You're about 10, 20 artifact power levels behind. Sorry, that's going to be a big difference. That's going to be about 20% of uh, your stamina that you don't have. That's going to be about 20% of your damage that you don't have. It's kind of them things. And it's like, oh my God, uh, there's no point in like playing the rest of the patch now because I'll always be behind and it's such a grind to actually get back up there. But I, yeah, hit 70 and I was like, oh shit, what do I do now? I've not done this in like three expansions. Uh, not since Warlords of Draenor when I could just go into my garrison and customize my garrison or whatever, which by the way was all cosmetic based, your garrison. And that's very much overlooked because it's very much how the game is when you hit 70 today a lot of the stuff that you gain is only cosmetics and a lot of people enjoy that a lot more rather than having to go out and farm player power through artifact power like i've said <laughs> but extra activities races are certainly one of them you can have a multitude of races in throughout the dragon isles you can race against other people there's time trials as well and uh, the time trials, funnily enough, I completed today. Um, it took me a few hours. I did all of them on a normal difficulty. And then you do them on an advanced difficulty. By the way, the advanced difficulty is very tough. It is very, very tough. And you're barely scraping like gold uh, every time that you do it. Um, but I managed to do it. Took me a few hours because I messed up. I didn't have the quest for it and stuff like that. Um, but I did my little achievement. I got a few cosmetics for my drakes and stuff. It it was really fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed feeling that I didn't lose any time getting player power while doing that. I could just enjoy my time gliding around on my drake, pushing my drake, like riding skills to the limit. And that was absolutely fine. You can do that now in Dragon in Dragonfly. It's absolutely amazing. Obviously, you have extra activities such as rep still there. So you have four main sort of reputations. All have their own, um, I forgot what it's called, like system where you can see what you can unlock. You have the Tuscar, the Valdraken, the Expedition, and the Muruk. Muruk? The Centaur people in uh, Oshigan. Uh, no, not Oshigan. Uh, the Plains area. You know what I mean. The Centaurs essentially um all of these you can clearly see what they give as a reward in terms of at the certain level that they are so you have 30 levels that you can get with them and you can see what rewards you get each level so you can clearly see that i want something from valdraken that i get at level 13 with them so you go and do some valdraken stuff and you don't want any of the tuscar stuff so you don't have to do it it's one of them things you can do whatever the hell you want uh, when you hit max level in Dragonfly, and it feels so free. It's it's not like I've... I, I haven't felt this in, well, for years. 
not since 2015, 2014, when Warlords of Draenor was out. That's insane, because Legion was obviously um, very much artifact power based. So yeah, Warlords of Draenor 2014, I've not felt this free when I hit max level. It's something. Uh, I, I just, I can't get over how free I felt when I hit 70. I was actually lost for a, like an hour. It's like, where do I go grind my artifact power or like to get my player like character better? And it's like, oh, I don't. Uh, okay. I guess I'll just go do some races then or something like one of them things. Enjoyment. Enjoyment in Dragonflight has been one of the most... How do I put this? It has been one of the best experiences that I've had in World of Warcraft since I first started. That's saying a lot. I've gone through... A lot in my World of Warcraft history. My first raid, my first killing of the Lich King back when I first started in Wrath of the Lich King. My first uh, Gladiator title, which was last season. My first, like, Garrison. I remember when Garrisons came out. I absolutely loved them. I loved Garrisons. I thought they were quality. Uh, They needed to, like, do some sort of social hub with it, maybe. You make less gold in there, that kind of thing. But... I thought they were a good idea. They were just poorly implemented, maybe, in terms of the social aspect. It didn't feel like an MMO, but we're getting off track. The enjoyment I felt throughout leveling was really good. The quests were very quick, sharp. Some were a bit longer. They all had a, a purpose to them. And the story, you actually wanted to carry on to see what happened next, that kind of thing. The max level enjoyment I've gotten has been absolutely amazing. The PvP I enjoy, as always. The dragon riding I always will enjoy. The world quests I even enjoy. Because I'm not obligated to do the world quests to get my power level, like I said. I'm obligated to do it because I want to. Because I feel like I want to earn these rewards from certain reputations. Not because I have to, but because I want to. Yeah, it's... It's one of the most enjoyable ex- start to an expansion that I've ever had. And the possibility of it being one of the best expansions is very, very high. The only thing that can lend it down, or there's a few things obviously, is patch cycles. If they go for a drought again, like they did in Wall of the Drain or uh, Shadowlands, like to an extent. It won't be good because you need to keep things fresh. You need to keep it moving. Um, If they scrap the sort of cosmetics ideas that they're having. So cosmetics wise, there's a lot in the game that you can be getting on with uh, at the moment. But they need to add more and more cosmetic rewards uh, throughout the patches. I think cosmetics are a lot better than player power rewards. A lot of people can farm them. Uh, later on even after the expansion so they're not always dead content because you've got artifact weapons that are dead content because you don't use them anymore Art of Azeroth dead content you don't use it anymore Uh, apart from me I actually use it in a speed uh, build uh, for running old uh, dungeons and raids but yeah you don't use it mostly and now legendaries legendaries uh, covenant renown you you don't use it anymore because Shadowlands is gone. So it's one of them things like cosmetics can be used all throughout World of Warcraft, transmogs, uh, pets, mounts, that kind of thing. But it can also be farmed after the expansion. So they need to keep adding the cosmetics throughout patches. It doesn't need to be loads, but it needs to be enough to keep people entertained for that patch. Obviously, new world quests will be popping up, but new zones as well. If we get something like a addition to like in Shadowlands, we got 9.1, and all we got was not Zeref Mortis. It was, I can't even remember the name of the zone because of how I'm gonna say shit it was. Well, it wasn't shit, the zone itself was meh, but how less impactful it was than most of the places that we've been to. Timeless Isles was amazing when it came out in Missa Pandaria. You had Tanan Jungle and stuff 
when we went to 9.2 or whatever. No, 9.3, I think, in uh, WOD. No, it was 9.2. God, we really missed out on a lot of content. Um, Zerif Mortis? Corthia. That's it. When Corthia came out, it was just an addition. It was a small sort of lumped addition onto the moor, and players had been running around the moor for an entire patch, so it wasn't really anything new. Whereas we need to see new sort of aisles pop up, maybe an underground section, which might have been data mined, you know, in the beta, just saying a couple days it was in there, got pulled out and said, change the name, that kind of thing, you know, just something like that. But we need to see a different scenery, essentially. We need to see something new and fresh because when we go back to the Dragon Isles uh, after the first patch or whatever, it will feel refreshingly new. You can maybe change the scenery of the Dragon Isles. You know, you can do many things, but they need to keep everything fresh. Otherwise, that is what kills the game ultimately because people get bored of looking at the same world quests, the same mountains. By the way, the scenery in the Dragon Isles, phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, I cannot fault it at all. It's perfect down to the last detail just from how bigger scale this map is to just sitting on a bridge somewhere right you can put you can fly up to anywhere you want and i bet you there will be an amazing view i bet you there will be an amazing view but this expansion is possibly and possibly be one of the best and i'm really hoping they don't mess it up from what we've seen from about halfway through Shadowlands and going forward, you know, with old catch-up systems, with them listening and stuff, with the content that they've brought out since then, it has the possibility to be one of, if not the best expansions that WoW has ever produced. But that is it for me this week. Thank you all very much for listening, as always. Do check out the Patreon, as there's ad-free content on that as well as YouTube and Twitch. Twitch, we always have a guaranteed stream on Sundays and Wednesdays at 7 GMT. But other days are uh, very much uh, subject to if you catch us, you catch us on that day. But thank you once again and go with Valor, friend. Goodbye, all.